So today we are beginning lecture 38 on the constraint steepest descent method. And this is one of the methods for constraint optimization, which is based on the steepest descent method and the quadratic programming method. And I'm Dr. Ranjan Kanguli. Now, what this steepest descent method or constraint steepest descent method tries to do is that it takes the steepest descent direction, which if you recall is C is minus D or D is minus C, and it modifies this method or the steepest descent direction to include the impact of constraints. And this method can handle both the type of constraints, that is the type hx equal to zero and the type gx is less than equal to zero. Now, one of the points about this method is that the solution point of the sequence xk, which is generated by the CSD method, is a KKT point. Now, CSD method also uses just the constraints which are active or violated. That means these constraints must lie on the boundary of the feasible region or they are not in the feasible region. And then these constraints are used to determine the QP sub problem and to guide the QP sub problem. So again, let's go back to the QP problem and recall that we essentially plan to minimize a function of this sort that is C transpose D plus half of D transpose D, where you are essentially presuming that the H matrix is a unit matrix, which of course is positive definite. Now, if we take this function F bar and we want to find the search direction which would minimize it, we can simply differentiate F bar with respect to D. And so you get C plus D equals zero which gives you D is minus C, which is nothing but the steepest descent method. And therefore, if no constraints are present in the problem, the steepest descent method is the same as the constraint steepest descent method. Now, as I mentioned before, CST uses the solution of the QP sub problem at a given point XK to determine the search direction. And the convergence of this problem is monitored using the Schenichny descent function, which you will recall was phi of x is f of x, the cost function, plus r into v of x, where r was the penalty parameter, which is a number which is greater than zero, and v of x is the maximum constraint violation, which should also be greater than or equal to zero. Now, this constraint violation is zero if none of the constraints are violated. And in that case, of course, you have an unconstrained optimization problem. Now, the way this method works is that some value of R is typically specified to start this method. And this value could be one. And later on, this value of R is changed depending on the Lagrange multipliers, which are being calculated as this method progresses. So again, recall when you are doing the QP problem, you do get the solution of the Lagrange multipliers as part of the solution process. So you have that information. Now, what you need to do is calculate how much you need to move in this search direction calculated by the QP sub problem. And again, recall the one dimensional search where this is specified by alpha subscript k, the step size, and this step size has to be cal calculated by a one-dimensional search method. Now, one of the good points about CSD is that it is very forgiving to discrepancies in the line search, and therefore you can use a rough line search to solve this problem here. And you need not use a very exact line search method such as golden search or combinations of the golden search and quadratic search and so on, 
which are required in some of the methods such as the conjugate gradient etc so this is a good point about this method is that the time can be spent in going from k k plus 1 k plus 2 and so on instead of in calculating the one dimensional search value at a given k so let us now write down the basic steps which you can use to write a computer program for the csd method you start with two small numbers so there is a constraint parameter epsilon 1 and a convergence parameter epsilon 2 we put k 0 select a starting design and put r0 is 1 as a starting value of that penalty parameter calculate the value of the function h and g at this particular point x0 as well as the gradient values calculate the maximum constraint violation vk recall that this is going to be the maximum of all the h g constraints and it's going to take the proper value here so essentially the constraint which has the maximum violation is kept here then you define the qp sub problem at this point x0 you have selected as the starting design solve to get the search direction dk and lagrange multipliers vk and uk now of course if you are at point k here this x0 would become xk now we look at these two convergence criteria we see if the search direction change has become very small as it stalled you are not getting any further changes in the search direction or if your constraint violations have ceased to be there so once these two parameters are both satisfied then you basically stop the method else continue now at this point you calculate this rk using the lagrange multipliers now if you do not remember this uh, go back to the lecture on the descent function and you will see it defined there and then you set this capital r is max value of rk and small rk recall that capital rk is what you have set as the value starting from 1 but then it is going to change as this method progresses it is going to use one of these values whichever is the maximum value then you use one dimensional line search can be a rough line search here in fact should be a rough line search to find the step size such that the value at x k plus 1 of the function phi is less than the value of the function phi at x k so this criteria of course ensures that the next point will see a decrease in the Schenckny descent function which you are trying to track in this method you then put k is k plus 1 and you put r k plus 1 is this value of r which you have obtained here and then continue the process by going to bullet 3 of the previous slide where you essentially calculate the function values h g at the point x k plus 1 and then you proceed on with this method so this method is quite simple to implement provided you have a qp solver built in somewhere so again that is one of the advantages of having quadratic programming method coded up in the sense that you can call them as functions or subroutines from the given problem and then you can essentially use the CST method to solve any problem you are dealing with. So we will terminate the video here and I will see you in my next video.